as convened here in terms of section 209 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe Amendment number 20, Act 2013, to unequivocally debunk and dismiss these rumors with the contempt they deserve. The purveyors of this false coup narrative claim that former members of the Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front, ZANU-PF, who fell by the wayside and largely went into self-imposed exile at the advent of the new, new dispensation in November 2017, are coming together in a united front with some named senior government leaders, some members of the security forces of Zimbabwe, and elements of the opposition formations. This is in a bid to taint the image of His Excellency the President, to undermine the legitimacy of government, and to render the country ungovernable. They further claim that once the contrived coup d'etat is executed, they intend to establish a national transitional authority, which will then govern Zimbabwe, minus ZANPF, for an unspecified period. Of course, nothing could be further from the true reality of Zimbabwe's security situation now and for the foreseeable future. Indeed, both claims of a military coup and a national transitional authority in the making amount to mere agenda setting by merchants of discord amongst our people with the support of their foreign handlers. They are completely unfounded. For the avoidance of doubt, there is no coup in the making. No, is there any form of transitional authority or inclusive government that is contemplated by the new dispensation, except in the fertile imagination of the purveyors of this false narrative? Government would like to sternly warn the purveyors of this medley falsehood, who include such characters as Sevia Kasukwe, Job Sikala, and a country of their accomplices who we are aware of, not to cry foul when the long arm of Zimbabwean law catches up with them in due course. They peddle this false narrative through opposition-aligned print and electronic media, including such non-attributable internet-based platforms as Gambako Media, Neander Radio, ZimEye, various anti-government hashtags, and thousands of trolls. There's quite a number of civil society organizations which have also enlisted onto this illegal subversive bandwagon under the control of certain diplomatic missions accredited to Harare. This narrative, which also sets an agenda, uh, which also sets an agenda for and promotes negative political activism, including coordinated fake abductions and media campaigns, has of late robbed in several self-proclaimed local and international prophets. These include one US-based Nathan Hambrid of the so-called Miracle Ministries, Talent Chuenga, a self-styled, rapid anti-government Harare First Street preacher, Simon Chilo of the so-called Deeds of Christ Ministries, and a few others. Most intriguingly, there's, there's concurrently evolved a palpable pattern whereby certain foreign missions accredited to Zimbabwe are now in the habit of misleading their capitals through purported intelligence gathered from these same dubious sources. Some foreign diplomats accredited to Zimbabwe have quite often not shy from engaging in anti-government acti activism which renders it difficult to differentiate them from card carrying members of the op opposition. They also have in the process brazenly jettisoned any semblance of diplomatic impartiality and, fi fi and finance in blatant violation of the peremptory norms of international law. This has resulted in the quite surprising adversarial stands and policies that some of the big powers are then projecting and unashamedly pronouncing against Zimbabwe. Some foreign capitals have also tried to arrogate unto themselves, based on these false narratives, the choice of nations that Zimbabwe should relate with. We would like to take this opportunity to remind and assure the nation and the international community at large that Zimbabwe, under the new dispensation, and the able stewardship of President Dr. E. Dim Nangagwa is stable and peaceful internally. Our country seeks the same peace, harmony, mutual respect, and non-interference from other states and non-state members of the international community. To this end, the new dispensation in Zimbabwe is actively pursuing 
a re-engagement and engagement policy. We are talking both to existing friends and to those who have opted without basis to characterize us as an adversary state in the belief that we can build new understanding for the mutual benefit of our people. Our government has also opened Zimbabwe to greater inflows of trade and foreign direct investment under the mantra, Zimbabwe is open for business. These policies, which ride on a raft of political, legislative and economic reforms that are currently being energetically undertaken, are major milestones towards the attainment of Vision 2030. This vision has the twin overarching national strategic objectives of developing Zimbabwe into a higher middle income society and, at the same time, bringing better livelihoods to all citizens. The negative image that is being pervaded by the above-named country of political misfits has the undesired effect of scaring away investors and painting Zimbabwe as insecure and unsuited for normal international engagements, both of which are detrimental to national development. This, sadly, is the strategic intent of these political malcontents. Be that as it may, government wishes to assure the patriotic, peace-loving people of Zimbabwe and the international community at large, that His Excellency the President, Dr. E. Dim Nangagwa, will not be distracted by these rumors from delivering the people's mandate, which he and the ruling party, ZANU-PF, resoundingly secured in the 2018 harmonized elections. Indeed, he's working diligently, tirelessly, and college collegially, in absolute harmony with his two vice presidents, the entire cabinet and civil service, in providing listening, authentic, and transformational servant leadership, which is the hallmark of the new dispensation towards the attainment of Vision 2030. Zimbabwe is a constitutional democracy that proudly boasts an evolving electoral culture that is growing stronger with every election that we have undertaken since 1980. Pursuant to this culture, which is enshrined in our constitution, our country goes to elections based on universal adult suffrage every five years. Lest we forget, our people fought a bitter and protracted armed liberation, liberation struggle from the early 1960s to 1980 to win this right to one person, one vote from a near century of colonial rule and settler occupation of our country. Given that background, the ruling ZANU-PF and his government would be the last to undermine or allow anyone to trash this fundamental inalienable right to democratic choice which it fought for and won on behalf of the people of Zimbabwe. Needless to say, the next harmonized election which is indeed the only next available opportunity for a constitutional and democratic change of government in Zimbabwe is coming in 2023. The people of Zimbabwe cannot, therefore, allow themselves to be misled by a hodgepodge of thoroughly undemocratic anti-constitutional personalities and political formations in our midst who, in cahoots with their external sponsors, are seeking to undermine our constitutional democracy through coup cool rumors and their other subversive, subversive agendas. As the dissenting people of Zimbabwe now know too well, these purveyors of evil pride themselves in actively inviting and bringing misfortune, such as economic sanctions, prevention of economic revival and development, promotion of mass street chaos and calls for military intervention to our country while gleefully trying to promote anti-constitutionalism and illegality. Government will do everything within its power to expose and bring to book these undemocratic sub subversive forces which we have, perhaps for too long, allowed to fester and operate freely in our midst under the guise of legitimate opposition. Lest some among us may further forget, our country has since the onset of the externally sponsored regime change onslaught in 2000, been and continues to endure the throes of hybrid warfare. This is by definition a strategy which employs political destabilization blended with an ever-present threat to escalate to conventional warfare, irregular warfare including terrorism and insurgency, as well as cyber warfare, along with other influencing methods such as fake news, intrusive diplomacy, economic warfare, illegal sanctions, current man manipulation, lawfare, and foreign electoral intervention to destabilize a targeted country. 
Indeed, the, rum the rumors of an imminent military coup alongside the incensed incidences of faked abductions, torture, and forced disappearance, and claims about a government of national unity or a national transitional authority in the making all form an integral part of this kind of warfare. The foregoing being the case, government remains acutely aware and sensitive to the untold hardships that are afflicting our people as a result of the ongoing economic challenges that our country is experiencing. Government is indeed also sensitive to the fact that this scourge has not spared our entire population, all workers, business people, members of the civil service, health workers, teachers, and members of the security services. We therefore take this opportunity to assure all the people of Zimbabwe that govern, government will spare no effort towards improving their livelihoods, along with the welfare and the conditions of service of employees. Our security forces, contrary to the rumors, remain disciplined, loyal, professional, and dedicated to their constitutional mandate. In conclusion, government wishes to urge the entire nation in unison, cohesion, and singleness of purpose to converge and put our shoulders to the wheel. We all need to restore our country's economic stability and growth, defeat the numerous threats that our nation now faces, include food, including food insecurity and the current COVID-19 pandemic, as well as staying the course towards the attainment of Vision 2030. Indeed, as the old adage goes, united we stand and divided we fall. Let us unite to secure and develop our country. I thank you. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page 263chat.